You know, uh, Linda, I guess I just can't in this day and age, I can't make a passing joke or anything in those world. They, they, they jokingly referred to their, their, uh, their, their little, you know, a get together before deciding on Cleveland in 2014 as the decision cave. Uh, they certainly aren't branding it that way. I just made a passing reference to it. And in the ravenous situation we're in, where every single little piece of LeBron information becomes a major thing, it all of a sudden became a major thing today. Um, this is not any different than what they did in 2014. Linda, LeBron has a very small group of people. We're talking two or three people that he is going to get together with. Uh, it'll be on a couch somewhere. I don't know what island it'll be on. It'll be on the <laughs> mainland or what city it'll be in. But his wife, Savannah, will play a major role, uh, probably the biggest role she's played so far because the family is older now. And it's not going to be in a cave. I, some people took it literally. It's just going to be a little get-together, okay? They joked about it being the decision cave. Don't listen. Don't worry about the caves anymore. I guess we can't have nice things in today's day and age. <laughs> Everybody has an opinion. So maybe I'm, I'm glad you're laughing, Linda, because it hasn't been laughing for me. Trust me. I'm sorry, Brian, but I think it's fabulous and funny. And you know what? It keeps LeBron James in the news. Ha ha. Like he needs the cave to be in the news. <laughs> OK, so we know what LeBron's thinking. We know has, he has a small amount of people around him uh, helping him to assist him in you know, making sure everything is uh, copacetic. So what are the Cavaliers thinking right now? Yeah, so the Cavs have had to have an alternate plan. Uh, as Woj had just said, uh, they have not gotten any guidance from LeBron. So they've had to develop an alternate plan because they have to act if LeBron uh, commits elsewhere. And right now, Linda, the Los Angeles Lakers have the inside track. Uh, they're going to have a great opportunity to woo LeBron James. The key is going to be uh, the uh, the pitch that they make him over the next 48 to 72 hours. They're going to have to be able to sell him on what their vision is uh, to build a team around him. If they execute that, the Cavs are going to have to take a second track, and that may involve making a decision about Kevin Love. Now, they have told Kevin Love, and his agent that they do not intend to trade him even if LeBron James uh, goes elsewhere like to Los Angeles but the big question will be will they get offers for Kevin Love if LeBron leaves and if they do get offers will they significantly try to change this roster it's an unfortunate position for them to be in they face having LeBron and competing for a championship or going another direction and maybe beginning a rebuild and they may have to make that uh, that fork in the road decision within the next few days just an incredible rippling effect this decision by LeBron James will have not only the Cavaliers, of course, but for the rest of the NBA. Now, thank you, Wendy. Let's send it back to Kevin and Woj. Yeah, and Linda, <laughs> obviously the spotlight shining brightest on LeBron, but Woj, there are still some other major names on the market, and it would appear as if Lob City has been fully deflated now it's after over. DeAndre Jordan declined his player option. You say it's over with the Clippers, so what's next for him? Well, they tried to do a sign and trade between the Clippers, Mavs, couldn't come to an agreement. So he opts out, and he's very clearly headed to Dallas after July 1. They, they technically cannot negotiate or talk about a deal, but Dallas has created the cap space. They need a center. DeAndre Jordan needed a team uh, with the space to sign him to a big-time, long-term deal. And so he'll very likely head to the Mavericks. He's a fascinating guy because he's going to make big money, but in many ways you can't have him on the floor at the end of the game. It'll be curious to see exactly where he goes and what he gets. Hey, speaking of bigs, Woj, how about a 25 and 13 guy who's still only 27 years old, Boogie Cousins? Who's in the mix there? Well, he, he, clearly there would be some disappointment in his camp tonight that uh, DeAndre Jordan appears headed to Dallas. They had hoped that that would have been a, a team that they could have used. Uh, to, to negotiate with against New Orleans. Coming off that Achilles injury, that's really difficult for anybody to negotiate in, in, a, in an open market. Uh, very likely back to the Pelicans on what might be a two-year deal. Um, he's going to have to show he's healthy again, get back to a high level. Cousins was a player who was on his way to a five-year full max contract, having the best season of his career um, before the injury. Um, but if he gets back healthy again, he will be back out on the market, um, you know, in short order, and he'll be able to go get that big long-term payday. Right, where the cap has maybe even gone up at that point here. Uh, well, it feels like there's been radio silence as it relates to Chris Paul, who is in line for a gigantic payday. I mean, is, is Houston, is that a given at this point? Yeah, he, he'll, very likely he'll be back with the Rockets. They're on the same page. When they traded for him, 
with the Clippers last year. They knew the kind of long-term commitment it was going to take, and they had the kind of season that makes you want to keep building off of that. Up 3-2 against the Warriors in the conference finals before Paul's injury. Um, they're, both sides are focused on getting something done uh, as we get into free agency tomorrow. You think in two, three hours sleep tonight? What do you think? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll even get more night. than that. Full, yeah. right. Free agency begins 12.01 a.m. on Sunday. If it happens, you'll hear about it from this man, Woj, on SportsCenter. Thanks, Dan. Well, that's the story on unrestricted free agents, but there's also a great group of restricted free agents, starting with Clint Capella. He averaged double-double for the Rockets. They are likely to match any offer he receives. How about Aaron Gordon? Gordon is just 22. He is coming off a career year for the Orlando Magic. He was at 17.6 points per game and 7.9 rebounds per game. And his three-point shooting, well, that improved as well. What about Marcus Smart? Smart doesn't necessarily stuff the box score, but Marcus Smart will bring all the intangibles off the Celtics bench to help the team play tough defense and win loose ball battles. The Celtics have professed a desire to bring Marcus Smart back. And not to be forgotten, Zach Levine. Zach Levine, who has struggled to stay healthy the last couple of seasons, last year was his first with the Chicago Bulls, and he averaged 16.7 points per game. But remember, Zach Levine is only 23 years of age. So the Bulls are on the list of teams with the most projected cap space, according to our Bobby Marks. These numbers are fluid, of course, and the Lakers can increase this to about 70 million by just moving a couple of contracts. Also, the Sixers can maneuver to 35 million if they wanted to offer LeBron James the max. Linda, that's what you must know about the NBA. Here's what you.